Hello, welcome to another edition of Build One Car Garage. Today we're talking about camshafts and my new roller camshaft we're going to be putting in, in the 79 Corvette and probably the most unconventional cam install you've ever seen. So hello and today we're going to be talking about camshaft. This is, let me bring you down here, this is the new uh, camshaft and my old camshaft that we have together here. Uh, this is my old L82 cam and this is my new hydraulic roller cam. Uh, the big difference between these two is um, profiles and the lifters that they use. So original L82 cam used a hydraulic flat tappet which rode here and it needed a nice gentle slope so that it wouldn't gall into the cam with with the edge. So that's why you can see that there is a lot smaller peak at the top here where the roller has a more um, broader peak because the roller has roller bearings and with that extra little distance there it's actually able to work with the roller to be able to come across and run on this larger profile. So the difference between the two cams, the original L82 cam um, at 0.5 at 0.50,000 lift is 222 on the intake and 222 on the exhaust with the intake lift at 0.450,000 and on the exhaust of 460,000 lift. Uh, lobe separation angle is 114 um, degrees uh, which is good for low end torque and all that that you want on a, a production street car. Um, the specs on my new roller cam at 50 thousandths lift is intake is 224, exhaust is 230 with a lobe separation angle of 112 degrees. Uh, recommended uh, RPM for this is 1800 to like 54 something, 5800, sorry. So uh, this cam is more of a, a mid-range power cam, upper end. Um, it will have a little bit of a loppy idle, which will be nice. Uh, the cam number for this, it's actually a marine grind that was recommended to me from Comp Cams himself. I gave them all my specs. It's a four-speed car, 350. I told them I had a little bit higher compression because of the aluminum heads and the ProFlow floor. Uh, fuel injection system with a single plane intake. And they recommended this cam, which is 12 418 8, if you want to look it up. But yeah, it should be a very good cam. And yeah, that's the difference here is the flat, flat tap it needs a less aggriff, aggressive uh, lift here, just because the way it has to ride up and not gall into the uh, lobe where the roller cam has a nice bearing wheel that is able to take up that difference because it extends out a bit and with the roller it's able to uh, have a more aggressive lobe on it and that's why you see this one here is actually a lot wider than the original flat tappet cam that's where I'm going to get my extra power and my extra torque um, out of this car. I expect somewhere, I don't know, between 400 and 440 horsepower. Um, the lift on the new cam is 503 on the exhaust and 5, I mean 503 on the intake and 510 on the exhaust. So I'll get a little bit more um, duration 
on it and I'll get some more left so between the two of them they will allow more air into the engine which will give me more power and everybody wants more power we just don't want a full race cam on the street because it's kind of useless it sounds nice but it'll be useless you want some low-end torque and you still want some upper rpm power just to be able to uh, give her once in a while but for the street you're more interested in um, low rpm uh, torque mid-range uh, so when you come off the light you have that power and some more you can feel a seat in your pants right all right so to put this in the car unfortunately uh, I left the hood on the car because uh, I didn't want to take it off and deal with alignment um, so what we're going to be doing is actually going in from the bottom so I have my rad out my air conditioning uh, condenser is there but it's once the hood is closed it actually has a a lot of movement I can push it forward um, I had to take off my headlight actuators and actually had to remove uh, the horn also just to give me room to be able to move the condenser forward uh, to be able to put the cam in so what we'll be doing is actually laying under the car and reaching up and putting the cam in from the top we'll put it into uh, a couple of bearings so it's supported and then from there we'll um, open up the hood again and finish the top from the rest because we're going to need the leverage so we don't mar up the the last bearings as we get it we'll stick a bolt into the front of the cam and that'll give us the extra leverage we need just to uh i said kind of pry it not pry it up but uh angle it up as it goes in uh so it's not drooping as it goes in all right all right all right so we're under the car i got the cam under here i'm gonna put a little bit of uh assembly lube on the front couple of bearings i have uh, just a pan down here with uh, some lube in it so i'm not going to do the um, cam lobes because that's not necessary just because of the uh roller rockers at the roller uh, um, you know what I'm talking about the roller things the lifters there we go all right cam coming up First couple are in, and that should be good. Now we get from the top and make sure it goes in right, and we get the leverage that we need. All right, so now we're up top. I have a bolt in the end of the cam to help me leverage it in. I got some assembly lube here. So I'm going to put more assembly lube on as I go, just on the bearings, just so I can get things set up uh, without 
having to prime the engine and all that because we still have to set all the uh, lifters and get all them set up because I don't know the length of my push rods yet for this new setup so there will be a point that we're going to um, use a push rod checking tool which is just a push rod with threads on it and is adjustable and that way we can uh, check that can determine our best length to make sure that the can goes in properly So just take your time lining each one up and don't let it drop too much as you go in because the, the bearings inside are Babbitt lined. Trying to make it easy just because when it comes off the next bearing, it's going to drop a li little bit like that. All right, so now this is the point that you're going to have to try to leverage up on it and get the bearing. <laughs> The last ones in. I think I'll put a socket on that and then use the uh, use a uh, socket tool also um, bar just to help me out of course the camera falls over I'm not looking so let's get that puppy back up all right so this is what we're gonna do we need a socket on an on extension put that on the end of the bolt and that'll be more of a handle for us and just like that there we go we're firmly seated on the back and that'll help me set up my thrust button on the front in the timing cover because once it's seated all the way back I put the cover on and my cover has an adjusting bolt on the front and what I'll do is the instructions I'll read the instructions again but um, they say screw it all the way in and then turn it back out I think it was an eighth of a turn or something and that way it'll give you your five to ten thousandths run out that you want um, it saves me from having to put a regular cam locking plate with a nylon button and keep taking the button out trimming it down make sure it's straight and then doing your measurements by putting a screwdriver into the lifter valley and pushing the cam forward um, you're going to need a some kind of dial indicator also and try to find a way to have that up against the one of the cam lobes in the valley too to actually take that measurement that you need so I spent a little bit extra money and bought a uh, the Cloy's timing cover with the adjustable button built into it uh, just to make uh, that process easier alright so we're gonna get the cam sprocket on 
and the, uh, the timing chain and the timing chain cover and get the front thrust set up. So this is my timing um, chain for the cam, the sprocket. So you can see right here there's a little dimple. So there's a similar dimple on the crank and it should be up at 12 o'clock and I know what it is because I uh, I had it set up before we uh, finished taking everything off the car. That's one of the things I did as I set number one cylinder at top dead center just to make sure right out of the box I had everything um, in a good position. So let's put this on. We'll get the cam turned. This will just make it easier to make sure everything is set up. So there's four holes here. Uh, three of them are for bolts and one is for the cam. Uh, the cam it has a pin on it. So you're going to set your pin and then you can put a cam bolt in. So I'm not doing this permanent because I'm going to have to take this back off and make sure that the uh, everything lines up. So I'm just a little bit off center. So I'm going to take that, turn it. I think I'll put a second bolt in just to make sure I'm lined up better um yeah bag and tag everything too it'll it'll make your life a lot easier when you're getting all this stuff organized and set up so there's two so what i do now is i guess a steel roller and i'll bring it down through the center so like i said my crank spot sprocket here I can feel the the uh, thing is at zero so I put a steel wool bring it straight across and make sure that I'm lined up right across to the center and that uh, it lines up with my dot on my crank through the center line on my cam and up to my spot on the sprocket, the little dot. So there we go. So that's lined up. Now I know the cam won't move. I can take this back off and we'll put the chain on with it. Uh, you can see there's two rows of teeth, so we are using a, a double roller camshaft. Uh, I mean, tiny chain, sorry. Alright, so there's a tiny chain. Double roller means there's two rolls. Two rows. So we'll take this back off. Put this into here. We'll make sure that the the dot again is straight up. And it should just drop right back on. This my dot. If I the chain on the bottom the sprocket, there we go. Just need dot. Okay, and the dots between these two holes.
without having to be able to look at the front of the engine. It's making it a little bit more difficult. There we go. So that should all be nicely, nicely lined up. We'll get our bolts back in. We'll get them uh, torqued back down. I'll have to look up. I do forget if they need um, um, lock tight on them. It's something you can look up for your engine. I believe they do. I'll just put them in loose for now just to get them in and for demonstration. After this I'll uh, read the instructions for the timing cover and make sure that the uh, timing cover has everything it needs. Uh, if it needs a gasket or just sealant because um, it's a special cover that you're doing for the uh, cam button and the, and the clearance. So the cam will so once I get these set up the cam will walk a little bit because of the the chain just the uh, the chain will not guide it the, the cam perfectly straight up and down it will allow it to walk that's why normal cams they actually while the rotating and the pressure on the lifters actually push them back and the back of the sprocket has a special oiling provisions and where and it'll keep it back um, we don't have that so it will uh, with the roller cam it will allow it to walk forward and that's what the thrust button is for it'll fix all that all right on to the next thing all right to finish up the cam install we're going to um, set up the front cover and set the button to the specs that uh, Chloe's asked. So this is my front cover. Like I said it's a Chloe's uh, aluminum uh, with a front uh, piece for it that slides in. Um, it is machined at the top there. You can see that's for uh, water pump clearance. So it does only go in one way just because of the, how they have the bolts pattern set up and you just have to set in there is an o-ring you can see that i've already installed on this the only other difference that i've done is originally the bolts that go in had a shoulder on them and what i've had to do is install hex head bolts that had no shoulder to be able to clear the center um, where the cam button sits into. See the other bolts with the shoulder they weren't allowing it to go in. So let me hop around here. Alrighty, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set this cover in. So the cam button um, is set all the way back out. It's it's uh, counterclockwise turned on the threads, and that allows it to go all the way out. So that goes in nice there. And then we're just going to put our supplied screws. So you don't need a lot of torque on these. They're, um, the O-ring is going to do all the work for you for uh, sealing this up. So basically you just get these placed in. So 
So you'll see I, I've already put the cover on. Um, I didn't put it on with a gasket because it is a aluminum machine face and the block is machine face. So you shouldn't have to put a gasket in there. Um, and because this is in the Corvette, it will have the short water pump. So you want to make sure um, you have as much clearance as possible. So I'm just tightening this up slowly across in a star pattern. Um, so that way the O-ring seats in there properly. And that's actually as per directions. Shouldn't leak. So now we're just going to use our flathead screwdriver and engage the button. And it's already pretty tight up in there. All right, back at it. So, anyways, what I ran into was originally I installed this with no gasket because it is a machine face and the block is a machine face and I didn't expect leaks. But what we ran into was that I had no adjustment on my cam button here. So now I have logo of adjustment on it where before I did not. Um, luckily, as they say, when you set it, you turn it in till it's snug and you back it off an eighth of a turn as per the instructions and then you install the locking screws. So I ended up having to have that gasket was just enough. Um, extra thickness that I needed to be able to give me a little bit of uh, end play on this. Um, also once the engine's running and it's hot, um, the aluminum will expand more than uh, the steel. Um, so it will actually open up that clearance a bit too. So let's see here. We are straight here. Yeah, pretty straight. So an eighth of a turn. Be 45 degrees and that's about it right there it's a pretty coarse thread on the uh, um, button adjustment so then they give you a, a hex head beveled screw and that goes in and that's your locking screw to lock your adjustment button in so we're not going to need a lot on that and it doesn't it doesn't say it needs Loctite or anything it says just put it in and tighten her up to 100 locking screw using a hex wrench to 10 foot pounds 120 120 inch pounds so I don't have a hex socket um, that small that I can uh, use on my uh, small torque wrench so we'll just estimate it I'm sh I'm sure it'll be fine so yeah now that's given me the the clearance that I need so if I go in here with a larger screwdriver, I should be able to go through the distributor gear port. And there should be a minute bit of play on the can.
Yep, just, a, just enough to say that there is. So that's it. Uh, cam install is done. Um, I pushed Roger at the store, so I'll go pick them up and I'll throw them in. Uh, there's nothing to see there. Uh, make an adjustment on the roller rockers once they uh, push Roger in. Um, we'll put it down to zero lash, which means um, you turn the push rods by hand and when they stop moving or they start getting firmed up as you as you turn them uh, that should be zero lash and then you'll take the um, hex screw hex nut here turn it down one full turn and that'll give you your preload on your lifter and inside the hex nuts on mine it has uh, allen head screws uh, that are actually the locking that will lock the uh, hex head in place and keep the lifter in place and that's it so until next time take care